Hi folks, it's Seamus from Outdoors Inspiration. Welcome to Outdoors Inspiration, Outdoor Essentials. I'm at Ditsworthy Warren today. It might not look familiar or significant to you. Maybe it does if you're local. This is the site where War Horse was filmed. It's the site of Narracott's farm. Looks very distinctive in the movie anyway. Anyway, what are we going to talk about today? Stuff sacks. Stuff sacks. I've got today a fantastic solution to the cheapest, lightest stuff sacks that you're going to find. Watch this space. Hi folks, so welcome to Outdoors Inspiration Outdoor Essentials and tonight I've got to announce the winner of the Pocket Rocket Two giveaway. Um, I can't do it straight away, and that's not because I'm trying to keep you stringing right the way through this video, but it's actually Tuesday whilst I'm filming this, so I've got to give people an opportunity to enter this right up until the end of the month. So I'm going to add a little bit at the end of this, uh, which I will film on Thursday morning once the giveaway is closed. Today, however, I want to talk about stowage of equipment and stuff sacks and dry sacks and that sort of thing. And I've got some personal views about that and I'll start off with that uh, that caveat right at the very beginning these are not reviews these are just my opinions about the stuff that I do in the places that I go with the things that I have um, other people will have different views um, and uh, I'm just sharing with you the way that I go about doing stuff now I have got a solution to the whole keeping things dry in your rucksack thing how to store things in smaller bags bigger bags and you're gonna love it it's cheap as chips I'm starting to sound like Dickinson with is flipping real deal now. So initially uh, what I've got for you this evening is a, an ultra light rucksack liner that costs very very little. In fact I think you can probably buy about 10 of them for £1.50. The best ones come from Tesco. Um, get the ultra durable ones but uh, let's start off with a bin liner. You know, it's waterproof, it's relatively durable. As I say, the best ones I've found come from Tesco. You might have your own views. Other, other supermarket brands are available. Um, but why not? It holds 70 litres. It keeps everything dry within your rucksack. Um, can't see a problem with that. Too big. You want stuff that's smaller that can keep stuff compartmentalised inside the rucksack as well. Got it. What about a freezer bag? Uh, these ones are from Morrison's. I find that Morrison's <laughs> produce the best tie top freezer bags. Um, cheap as chips again. I think you can get about 30 for about £1.50. So they may not be the most durable option, but crikey, it's replaceable after a day's hike, isn't it? Other supermarket brands are available. Asda. In Petra's Palisades pack that she wears, I put in her bed, her blanket, her jacket and her other accoutrements and they're sealed up in an Asda zip top freezer bag. And she spends far more time in a river and in a bog than I do. She's in and out the river, she's splashing about and every time I come to unzip her pack, her stuff's perfectly dry. Quite amazing. So, that about wraps it up for tonight. Um, that's where we'll leave it. Um, bin bag, smaller things, zip top bag works a treat. Have a good night. We'll see you soon. Come on in Petra. Hello Seamus. Yeah? What do you mean, not Gucci enough? What do you mean we've got to drive outdoor consumerism to ensure that the leisure industry retail providers are, uh, are making sure that we're up to date with the latest spec equipment? Yeah, but that just costs money. All right. Yeah, okay. That well, seems daft to me. Oh, okay. Right. Cheers now. Bye. Hmm. 
Apparently that isn't it. Apparently there's some other things I've got to talk about. So let's start at the beginning. Many of the items that we buy for outdoor use come in their own little stuff sacks. I mean, this is a beautiful little stuff sack. Came with a, an inner tent in it that now lives with the main tent. Um, and that does nicely. That's, uh, that's siliconized nylon with a ripstop uh, nylon there. That's, uh, that's going to do a really good job of containing things if I want to put things in the lid of my rucksack. This is another one that, uh, that came with a, a floor of a tent. Another one that I've used for probably about 10 years keeping things in the lid of my rucksack. Um, quite nice, really. Uh, but it didn't cost me anything. Well, it did when I bought the item. But let's start thinking about the things that we can reuse and repurpose. Because we've actually got probably quite a few stuff sacks hanging about the place that we haven't really thought about. Let's talk about what we're going to line our rucksacks with. Um, your rucksack may boast that it's waterproof. If it's got a roll down top and it's made by uh, a company that's specifically making that type of rucksack, it probably isn't a walking rucksack. Um, you can put a rainproof cover on it, but again, if the pack becomes immersed, um, it's, things are going to get wet inside. So we do need to line the inside of our rucksack. It's vitally important. Now, a bin liner may well do the trick. You probably need something a little bit more robust while you're jamming things into the rucksack and taking things out of the rucksack. So perhaps think about, let's upgrade from the bin liner a fertilizer sack that's been washed out. My dog food bags come in 15 kilogram bags, which are quite, uh, quite large, quite robust. Just snip the top off of that, wash it out and reuse it and repurpose it in here. The majority of the young people that we see coming to the tent halls for scrutineering have got their rucksacks lined out with a robust bin liner and that's all that's required of them. Now, I'm not saying that's necessarily the right option. It's a option. There are more robust ways of going about this. So, what do I use? And that's what I'm going to talk about. What I use and what I've used in the past and uh, how you go about doing it. It's up to you, really, isn't it? So, a rucksack liner that I used for a considerable time was, uh, was made by Podsacks, uh, 60 to 80 litres. And uh, it's pretty robust, this. You'd have to go some to do any damage to a, a rucksack liner like this. Uh, it'll take some abuse. It's PU coated textile. It's uh, tape seams on there. It's pretty waterproof. Eventually the tape will probably give out. It hasn't yet. Uh, and it does a really, really robust and good job. But for many people, they want to lessen the load. And to be honest with you, if you start looking after the grams in your rucksack, people say, well, you know, how do you get away with an eight or a six kilogram rucksack? You look after the grams first, then the tens of grams, then the hundreds of grams. And that weighs significantly significantly more than a siliconized nylon rucksack liner. Seems petty, but with every gram we add on, we're adding load to our, our rucksack and we're adding bulk to our rucksack as well. And to be perfectly honest, I'm not too fussed about it. I can't get excited, but currently uh, for my rucksack, I'm using an Osprey uh, 50 to 70 liter siliconized nylon uh, rucksack liner. Um, it does the job. It really does. Uh, it's robust enough and it meets that balance of light weight enough to fit within the bag and keep everything I need contained. I seldom ever roll this all the way down and then clip it in uh, because the chances of my rucksack getting immersed are pretty slim. Not impossible, but pretty slim. It's happened to me once in 1986. In 1986, 10 tours, 55 mile, with my mates in the Air Force. Geordie stood on the other side of the river. Geordie catch my rucksack, threw it, and then it went into the river, totally immersed. And that was the one day of my life that I didn't have a rucksack liner. I had a very cold and very wet night that night. Um, those of you who were around for 1986, 10 tours on Dartmoor, that was a pretty horrendous, horrendous weather event that we went through with that. And then of course, there's always Ortlieb. I generally use these on my boat uh, and in kayaks and the like because I know they're not going to become damaged with anything they're going to come into contact with unless it's a knife, I suppose. Um, but otherwise, uh, they're pretty robust. At the end of the day, don't let the marketing hype drive your purchasing decision. The only piece of advice I really can offer is to say, get a range and selection of dry bags or stuff sacks 
that suit your needs, i.e. they will contain what you want in a variety of sizes. I would also go for a variety of colours. Now that kind of like tunes in with the brain, doesn't it? That colour, I've got that in it. That colour, I've got that in it. It may not be a cognitive thing. You may not think, ah, right, the red bag contains this. But certainly it will have an imprint if you always pack things in a particular way, a different coloured bag for a different purpose. Some bags come in sets. So the Exped ones, for example, will come in a set that have a uh, variety of colours. Sea to Summit will do exactly the same, and so will other leading manufacturers. Um, so having a variety of colours would be helpful. Some will be PU coated uh, with tape seams, and those will probably be the least durable. They'll seem like it initially, but actually the PU coating will eventually end up uh, coming away and the tape seams will come away. So this particular bag from Sea to Summit uh, weighs about 40 grams, I think, on the scales, and it takes 13 litres. Another small one from Cedar Summit, and then there's the Exped one. So there's a whole range of dry bags from Exped. Now, they're all pretty durable, those. I've had these ones for a number of years, and they've just lasted, to be honest with you. Different colours, different sizes, different purposes. They don't all go with me every time. Um, I just use appropriate ones for the appropriate time. Now what I tend to do is I'll, I'll line the rucksack with a rucksack liner and then I organise things. So these other stuff sacks or dry bags are just there to organise my equipment. So when I get to my campsite I know what's where. Some people don't do that. Some people will just use the individual bags and everything goes into their rucksack. That's fine. Everything's waterproof. Some people will just use one big bag liner and put everything into that. Whatever floats your boat. I'm not an advocate of anything in particular except for the way that I do things for me. So this is a range of sill nylon stuff sacks made by a firm called Ookworks. Um, and Ookworks make bespoke sill nylon products um, and bespoke tent products. They've recently changed hands and uh, they've got a new owner. Chris, who's the new owner? at Ookworks very kindly sent me a set of his uh, stuff sacks. I'd actually ordered a different one and there was a little bit of a problem with it and he sent me another set out. So I was very grateful to Chris for that. So I'm going to put a link in my description to Ookworks and you can find the new, uh, the new company there. So here we go, siliconized nylon in a very, very lightweight dry sack. I can't remember the weight of these. I did put them on the scales individually, but they are very, very lightweight and very tenacious with ripstop nylon. The stitching is of a, a, a fantastic quality and I'll just demonstrate that for you now. So there's my platypus and I'm just gonna empty that into a sill nylon stuff sack. There's a couple of litres of water there. Now the pressure inside this stuff sack is quite phenomenal really. I know it's dribbling away, I know it's not absolutely watertight, but how watertight do you want it to be? That's, um, that's a pretty good indication of the stitching there, isn't it? So really the question is how tenacious do you need your bag to be? You know, if you're holding kit inside your rucksack, does it need to have a roll top closure and make it absolutely waterproof and watertight? In which case you need a dry bag. Are you really going to be paddling up the Orinoco River using your dry bag as a paddle as you go? I don't know. Um, I tend to use them because it's what's available on the market. I mean, these particular ones from Caesar Summit come with replaceable catches uh, on the top here so that if one of these wears out or breaks, you can replace it. I've never broken one in my life. You know, I'm more likely to wear a bag out or put a hole in it before that happens. Um, but you're paying for that when you buy that product. But they are very, very nice products. Very well manufactured and absolutely watertight. I use any one of the stuff sacks or dry sacks that I've shown you uh, throughout my little collection here at uh, any one time. I use whatever's appropriate to carry whatever I'm carrying on the day that I'm carrying it. It makes no odds to me and that's up to and including the Morrison's freezer bag uh, because they're very useful. And it's up to and including a bin bag. Although I would probably upgrade that and go for the fertilizer bag to be perfectly honest. Now I hope that's been of some use to somebody somewhere watching this video um, because I know it could be a minefield. These things aren't cheap. You know when somebody's asking you for 10, 15 or 20 pounds and in some cases 30 pounds uh, for a rucksack liner. Don't forget there's always the fertilizer bag or Morrison's tie top freezer bag or Asda Ziploc freezer bag. Makes no odds really 
but it's uh, it can be a bit confusing if you're new to wild camping or you're new to uh, the outdoors and you're thinking what do i need to put my kit in well it's not rocket science is it just keep it waterproof keep it out of the way keep it organized and you'll be fine absolutely fine the rest of it how gucci you want to be how you want to organize your kit well only you can answer that really um but we all like nice uh, Gucci things from time to time. It feels nice. Sil Nylon's got a very nice feel about it, hasn't it? So anyway, I'll be back in a minute to uh, to announce the winner of the MSR Pocket Rocket 2 giveaway. As I said, I can't do that right now because it's not uh, it's not the end of the month at the moment while I'm filming this. So I will film this either from the same location if I'm feeling like I want to come back out here again, uh, or you'll see me from a different location in just two ticks. See you in a second. Right, back again. As you can see, it's not the same setting, place or day uh, for that matter. There's been a few sharp showers, so I've, uh, I've taken a more sheltered spot to finish this off. It doesn't hurt to take a moment of reflection sometimes when you're videoing things. Um, I've been thinking about the Cetus Summit bags, you know, they're really lightweight, these Ultrasil bags, with the ones with the replaceable catches on. Although they're extremely lightweight, in fact, you could probably have a game of volleyball with one. They're very durable. Anyway, I'm digressing. We're here to announce the winner of the MSR Pocket Rocket 2. But before I do that, I'd like to say thank you very much to all the subscribers uh, to the channel. I'm really, really grateful. I've got some really positive feedback coming through, lots of comments and dialogue ongoing, uh, and I'm very, very grateful. Thank you very much indeed, folks. Now, where's some... Um Where's everybody gone? Ah, there you are. So to everybody that entered the draw, I put your name on a piece of paper. See to Summit bag. Everybody's names. There we go. Nothing left in there. And we'll just seal this down. What I do like about the uh, dry seal bags from Sea to Summit is that they're absolutely airtight, which means that they're watertight. Anyway, it doesn't get much more random than this, does it? <laughs> Quite enjoying this. So the winner is... Pitkin 03. Pitkin 03, I'll be getting in contact with you, and uh, you are now the winner of an MSR Pocket Rocket 2. Well done, congratulations. I'll be sending this to you in due course. I need to get in contact with you first and find out where you want me to send it. And a huge thank you to everybody from Petra and I uh, for taking part in this giveaway. I'm truly grateful to you. Uh, we'll be having more giveaways in the future. I've just got to think of a different format for it. I'm not so comfortable with this whole subscribe and share thing. I think a competition of some sort would be quite good. I need to come up with an idea of how to do that. Um, so uh, bear with me, bear with this channel. I hope you like what we're doing. Uh, if you do, please give us a like. Uh, if you're new to the channel and it's the first time you've seen it, give us a subscribe. I'd be really, really grateful if you like what we're doing. Um, and I'm always going to get back to comments, so don't hesitate to comment and, uh, and ask any questions or give us suggestions. It's starting to pour with rain now, so I'm going to be off in a second. But thank you ever so much, folks. Take care, and uh, we'll be out for a wild camp probably this weekend somewhere, and look out for that in the early part of next week. Cheerio. Bye-bye. Go on in, Petra. Go on in, Petra.